So, before we get involved, I need to tell you that I'm here not as a Jewish cheerleader for Judaism, the, uh, although I'm wearing a kippah, the kippah I'm wearing tonight is the kippah of the academic, the cold, cruel academic who doesn't fall into the patterns and stereotypes as best as he can prevent himself from falling into the stereotypes that are so much a part of personal narrative, or national narrative, or religious narrative. What do I mean by that? What I mean is that we all, everyone in this room, uh, grows up within a culture of expectations about how the world works. And that culture is formed from infancy by family, by religious community, by national community, by language, by culture. And that formulation of the way we perceive the world, and we don't all perceive the world alike in this room. Many of us see things very differently. But the way we see the world, the way we are programmed to see the world is such that we unconsciously want the world to fit into patterns that make sense to us because that's how we were raised to see the world. There are good guys, there are bad guys. We need to break out of that narrative, whatever that narrative may be. Like I said, we all have different mini narratives within the larger narrative of what is the Western world. And we need to be able to transcend that if we want to observe the world and to make sense of it in a way that is accurate. I'm going to give you one example of that from my experience in Egypt. After a while of living there for a number of months, I had the opportunity to, I was with a bunch of friends, we were out on the Faluka, on the Nile, having dinner together, and uh, the first time I was confronted with this story, but I, I heard it actually a number of times afterwards, uh, one of my friends was extremely well educated and was working for USAID, by the way, as an Egyptian for the USA government supported aid program in Egypt. He said, you know, you Americans are just an amazingly violent people. You're a violent, aggressive, unfeeling, uncaring people. You start wars all over the world so that you can raise your standard of living. Your mothers are perfectly happy to send their children out to kill other people and to be killed so that you can be dominant in the world. You start wars on other people's countries so that you won't have wars in your own country. And you kill thousands and thousands and then get all very upset when a few of your own countrymen die. So what kind of a country is this? You have the highest rate of violent crime in any Western country in the world. You glorify violence in your movies, in your television programs, and you know, and, and, and then and then you repeat it, and your mothers don't care about the lives of your own children because they're willing to sacrifice for your material benefit. And I'm thinking to myself the first time I heard that, I was thinking, that's funny. That's exactly what we think about you. <laughs> this is the stereotype that we have about Arabs, right? Every mothers don't care about their children, suicide bombers, right? And this is a stereotype. I know that although we have a lot of problems in America, our mothers don't want our children to die for us to have a higher standard of living. These are stereotypes, and it made me reevaluate many of the kind of stereotypes that are part of my narrative or our narrative. It's a nice, white, upper middle class Jewish boy who grows up with a certain amount of privilege in America and how that impacts or affects the way I see the world around me. 